my statement is on that internet service providers or ISPs are given protections that unfairly affect consumers. Some of these protections include the local governments establishing them essentially as local monopolies, as well as getting government grants for those areas that they're established as monopolies to build out their infrastructure. So cities can, will sometimes go to an ISP when they are building out their, their city essentially, and they'll say, we'll pay you to build your infrastructure in our city because we think that'll be a good thing for our economy, so people will move there. This, however, negatively affects consumers because it establishes that one internet service provider as a local monopoly, essentially free to do whatever they want. And while that's on a local basis, there are some more widespread bases, such as the fact that there are basically three internet service providers across the U.S. that you've probably heard of, then those three are Comcast, AT&T, and Time Warner Communications. These three corporate corporations don't seem to have any sort of overlap in their uh, markets, so they never directly compete with one another. And as a result, this causes people to be stuck with whatever level of service that they have and they can't really select a different option because they have these regional monopolies. This becomes problematic because people can't do the vote with your wallet type premise where they say, oh, I'm not, I'm not happy with this company the way they're treating me. I'm going to go pick someone else because there isn't, a, there isn't any <coughs> other corporation. Uh, the consumerist did a survey and found that in the Minneapolis-St. Paul area, there are two major ISPs, and only a couple percent of the land area that they surveyed in that area actually had both. The rest of it was either one or the other. Similar problems were found in the Los Angeles area as well as the New York metropolitan area. So this subsidy thing that I mentioned earlier is something that cities do to attract existing ISPs. And because there's only three or four across the U.S., this subsidy is very likely to go to one of those existing corporations. So creating a new internet service provider, which has costs of literally billions of dollars to just get into the market. Uh, Google Fiber is a great example of one of these. A, the, a reporter for Ars Technica found that Google had lost about $400 million in their expansion in just three cities. And that's due to the fact that ISPs are so difficult to become one. It's very difficult to lay the infrastructure just to get customers on it to the point where they don't want to go to AT&T or Comcast or some other company. So it's this kind of catch-22 situation that these ISP startups end up in is we don't want to give you money until you've established yourself and you can't establish yourself until you get money. So therefore this, this is the reason that these uh, perks and protections against antitrust laws and stuff generally negatively affect the consumer while favoring the large corporation ISPs. Thank you.
All right, Joshua, the proposition contains a value claim. That's a little bit problematic. Uh, there's no preview of what the secondary points. That's definitely problematic. And when you get to the body of the speech, I couldn't distinguish between uh, information that you're presenting and claims that you're advancing. So you need to signpost those claims a little bit more. Uh, information gets cited. I mean, you present what's supposed to be a lot of factual data, it's background information, but we don't have any source citations on that. The closest you get to being specific to uh, the companies, you mentioned the names of three companies, but I don't have any idea what percentage of the internet market they have. Uh, Comcast, AT&T, and Time Warner. If it's evenly divided, they got 33% each, or Time Warner has 70% and ATT has a little bit and Comcast has a smaller amount. I don't know any of those kinds of data because you don't provide us with uh, comparative data there. And then later on, it, it gets referred to as three or four, so now it sounds like there might be somebody else as well. So I'm not quite sure you know, um, that you've given us enough of a description here to feel confident that that's the case. The best evidence that you had came from that study in Minneapolis that showed that uh, there's only a small portion of the area there that is served by two companies. That's pretty good. And then you say it's similar in Los Angeles and New York. You know, that's a, a little bit vague reference. It would be nice to have some more specific information on that. But as important as New York and Los Angeles and Minneapolis might be, I don't know that they represent a, a substantial part of the country. And the notion that there isn't a choice, I think, is problematic. Here's the thing that I think is also missing, and that is the question about how consumers are harmed by this. Have Are, are prices, uh, do they go up excessively without any control? Have prices gone up? Uh, are, if there are problems with service, they they don't have, like you said, they can't uh, talk with their wallet, they can't vote with their wallet. Uh, is there a demand to do that? Are people dissatisfied with their ISP providers? I'm looking for some information that shows that. See, I think there are a couple of essential supporting points missing from the argument here. Uh, you seem to understand the concept pretty well, but I think you need to develop a lot more proof for this particular argument. And I can see everybody is anxious to go, 